and don't challenge with everyone else. If you don't feel the weight of your backpack, you are more free. You can really discover yourself. The Camino will teach you that you have some parts of body about the existence of which you did not even know before. Hi, we are Eric and Ricky. We not only walk Camino de Santiago, but we also help others in the preparation and ask them important questions. Today we'll... What is the best piece of advice you've learned on your Camino? Say good morning every day. It's every time you pass somebody and, and they're local, say hi to them. You know, maybe they're disconnected, they don't want to talk, yeah. but eventually you're going to break down somebody and they're going to make them smile. That's it. And, and, and just... we've done that so much on our trip. Whenever we meet somebody who give them the blank, you know, and they kind of like, like this, we, we just say, they're like a telephone. They're temporarily disconnected. We'll call back later. And that's what we do. We'll see them in a day or two next. And, and next thing you know, they're saying hi to us. Hey. You know, and we, it's we a wonderful thing. Down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When I started, and I, I would get into the towns, I get so anxious. That there's so there's all the churches, there's all the people, everyone's eating, and you got to go do all the stuff. And I think you just have to. You walk. You're gonna see what you see. If you walk by the church, beautiful, go in. If you see that person you met a week ago, say hi. But don't try to do it all. You know, it's you, you can't. <laughs> so just kind of follow your heart. And I think you learn towards the end, the Camino is going to guide you the right way, you know. I think that to be prepared physically, walk at home, walk with your pack on, um, put miles in at home so you're physically prepared. You don't want to come here and deal with blisters or shin splints or knee issues. And then um, maybe come with a reason or a purpose or an idea of what why you're here, I think that is, would be helpful for to mentally prepare for that as well. And then I'm going to go opposite. I would say don't come with an expectation. Prepare a little bit, of course, yes, because I did, but don't come with a pre preconceived notion of, of it and let it just be what it is for you. Yeah. And don't rush. Don't, Don't rush. rush. If you slow down. slow down, if you can take a minimum of 30 days to do it, the focus isn't about how many miles you're doing a day because you don't want to miss anything in between. And there's yeah. just so much beauty here. Tranquilo. Be relaxed, be calm, be open for other people. Um, be brave enough to speak with someone also about your emotions, there's space. And I think the biggest currency in the Camino is time. Try to plan your, plan your Camino with enough time, also for the arriving, maybe after the Camino that you have four or five days to go to Fisterra or stay in Santiago. Yeah, and to celebrate that you finished the, your first or your second Camino. Take one step after the other, don't think of rushing through or that you had to do it in four weeks or in two weeks or, or you can yeah just just go along and think you can manage it's just one day after another and don't challenge with everyone else just uh, feel the challenge in yourself and then it's not such a big deal it's actually just a way of living yeah. <laughs> basic living yeah. embrace Spontaneity, I think it can be easy to get caught up in wanting to micromanage and plan out your Camino and the best moments have offered themselves from purely being in the moment and existing with the freedom of, of the Camino and, and if you're able to, to go with the flow, you'll be able to, to meet new people more easily and walk with new people. I think that's one of the most important things. Watching your films can help, really. Uh, do not bring unnecessary things, like it's not like you won't care about your makeup clothes or something. Just bring the, the most necessary stuff. Bring joy with you, just, just come. They, don't analyze it, just come. I, I, I had like a roller coaster in my head before coming here. I, I was thinking like, how will I do all this by myself? Like, I don't know, like, how I will organize the food for, for Alberga, or I don't know, um, like, there were so many questions. 
And for, for what? I don't know. <laughs> Just trust yourself, everything will be fine. Don't bring anything. Bring one of everything. Just one, one thing. I got rid of a water bottle. I got one pair of shorts, one t-shirt, one uh, set of underwear, six pairs of so socks because you find people that come with the wrong socks. I gave away three pairs of socks, people with blisters. So bring extra socks, but one of everything. The less you bring, the happier you're gonna bring. And get rid of things along the way. Not on the Camino when you get to your destination. <laughs> so if you're starting to plan, I would say definitely consider your fitness level. I think some people say you can train on Camino. I think if you're probably like uh, maybe in your 30s and older, you should consider really what is your fitness level because it's not easy. Uh, it's not impossible, but it's just not easy. And then um, for if you're already starting walking, I think assume positive intent of your fellow pilgrims. So if you have somebody who's making noise with their bag or, I don't know, leaving the bathroom light on or whatever, it's just part of Camino and just accept and, you know, let it pass. Don't, don't hold on to it. Don't go on some Camino forum and be like, oh my gosh, everybody's making noise at 5 a.m. Just give grace everywhere you go and be an open, just be open to everybody and you'll have a good time. Hearing those inspiring stories, you might be feeling motivated to start your Camino journey. Before you embark, consider joining us on a special retreat that is designed to prepare you both physically and mentally. Our retreat offers personal guidance, expert advice, and a supportive community to ensure you're ready for adventure ahead. Sign up to secure your spot and start your Camino with confidence. Click the link below to learn more and register for our pre-Camino retreat. Don't miss this opportunity to make your Camino experience truly unforgettable. You got to do it and just come with the expectation that things are going to go wrong and you might, you might get lost or you might get sick or you might get bed bugs. I never did, but you know, things are going to happen and you just keep going. You just keep going like Altrea. You just keep going. and be able to, to let things go. I also started with the decision that if, if it doesn't work, uh, I will be able to decide to go home, even after 100 kilometers. If it's 100, that will be my way. But uh, of course, with all my pains, I didn't decide to go home. But uh, maybe I would say to those ones who uh, don't really prepare physically. Maybe for the first time they should try a, a shorter stage. And, and I also think that uh, when your body needs it, you, you, you should stop. The Camino will teach you that you have some parts of body about the existence of which you did not even know before. So this is why I uh, went to the hospital in Burgos, because I wanted to continue and they told me that, yes, it's an inflammation. I uh, took a lot of painkillers and uh, about 10 or 12 days, it, it was really hard. But I went on somehow, but only I know how it was. So uh, to other people, you don't wish this pain. There's being free, being flexible, but I also think it's important to have a long, continuous walk, and it's hard to get that time off, but I really do believe in the importance of like trying your best to, whether, whether your pace is fast or slow or each day is different, I think like having just that long, continuous walk really like is where the magic happens. Uh, I uh, have made a training before, not only legs, okay, you can train only your legs, but uh, you're working with a backpack, okay, you need your back muscle, abdominal muscles, I um, work with uh, walking sticks, okay, you need your arm, you need the shoulder, you need your pecs, 
uh, you know, in your breast. I've made a specific training several eight months before, every day, to support the weight of my backpack. It's not necessary, but if you don't feel the weight of your backpack, you are more free. It's easier. When it's easier, it's better. <laughs> After five years of prep preparing, um, I realized I didn't need five years to prepare. <laughs> and I did no physical training before. We didn't walk, we didn't hike, we didn't do anything other than just, I looked, looked at your videos and I looked at, uh, I read a few books, especially the books, uh, there was two books written by two Catholic priests that both of them did the Norte and I got ideas how to do that. And then I also had my sons do um, the spiritual exercises by St. Ignatius uh, to prepare them mentally to spend time reflecting and uh, to prayer. So that was really the only real preparation we did was do these retreats uh, to prepare uh, spiritually for what we were going to be encountering in our time of walking. So you say that anyone who comes you don't need to prepare, you just... A little bit, yeah, you should prepare a little bit. But I think uh, I mean, I've seen people with polio walk in the Camino, which is amazing, and they just go forward, and it, it makes me think, this is easy, you know, <laughs> to try nada. This is, I should just look at them, they're, you know, we think of how difficult our own lives is, and we don't realize how much more difficult other people's lives is, and you see that definitely on the Camino. That means there's no excuses not to come. No, come. Come now. Don't wait. <laughs> That's a, that's a tricky one. I, I'm not good at giving advice. You think about if your best friend is calling you and say, should I come or should I know? What should I expect? If it's good for me or not? So what would you recommend to your best friend if he's thinking, if she's thinking about Camino de Santiago? Of course, uh, if anyone asks me about Camino, I like 100% uh, recommend to go. And I just, I would say like, don't think about it too much. Um, bring with your curiosity and don't like do lots of uh, work before you go. Like you cannot plan every day so well and you need to embrace this uncertainty. I think that's a part, that, that's how you enjoy the Camino. Relax because it's very mature, everything will be taken care of. Uh, you won't be in danger or, or you won't like uh, end up in nowhere and everything is so well organized. Just enjoy it and you will find so many fun along the way. I wouldn't say I, I recommend the Camino for everybody and I, I, I go to each person and say, you have to walk the Camino, right? Because I, I do think, for example, me, my father always talked about the Camino and he, I never thought I would do it before him. Now that I lived it, I want like, I, I think and it's like, I want him to live it so much, right? And it's going to be awesome for him and stuff. And my impulse tells me like, uh, push him to, you know, and make him excited about it. But then I think it's, if you want to do it, you find your own moment, you know, in life and you'll find your own Camino, somehow as cliche as it sounds. And I, I cannot put into words how awesome it, it, it is for me and the effects I see on other people. So to me, it's a no brainer, like do the Camino for sure, but do it on your own timing. Do it if it, you think it's for you, you know, do it if, 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 if you are in tune with it somehow. Every time in the Camino, when uh, I was um, sad or uh, tired or uh, a lot of raining, I, I don't want to joke, laugh uh, and something uh, like uh, this. Uh, I meet uh, a person or a place or something that uh, make me happy. I know that uh, it's uh, impossible to believe, but the Camino uh, gave to me what I need every time.